I just want to apologise now for all the names I'm about to mispronounce. G'day, I'm Jules and welcome to another One Chapter at a Time. Today, we are going to be reviewing a vintage mechanical watch that simply oozes cool. It is a lesson in simplicity. The Raketa Big Zero. This mechanical watch was made around the mid 1980s in St. Petersburg, Russia. Why I want to look at this watch today is its design. But to do that, we need to look at what the world was like when this watch rolled off the assembly line in the heart of Russia. The Raketa Big Zero was originally produced from the early to mid 80s, though there are new examples of the Big Zero still being produced today. The Raketa Watch Company was an offshoot of the Petroverts Company, and the Petroverts Company was first established in 1721 by Peter the Great. Back then, Petroverts was a lapidary company, polishing precious and semi-precious stones for the imperial court. Fast forward a couple of hundred years, and they are still one of the finest polishing houses. But come the 1930s, their know-how was expanded to polishing stones for the watchmaking industry. Another decade later, much of the world was plunged into war. The Petroverts company of expert machinists were making finely made precision mechanical parts for their military effort. At the close of the war, all these finely honed skills were put to a new use and the Pobeda Watch Company was born. Pobeda meaning victory in the native tongue. For those keeping score, 20 years later, the world was gripped by another race, the space race. In 1961, to celebrate Yuri Gagarin's historic space flight, a line of watches were made under the name Raketa or rocket. It's this rocket man, not this rocket man. Reportedly, behind the Iron Curtain, Russia was a fully functioning, albeit bleak, place to be. This view of Russia permeated through to the West. Some of the new freedoms to the media started to pull back the curtain. This tone was amplified on the sinister nature of the reclusive state in films like From Russia With Love, where we see James Bond go head to head and toe to toe with the enemy agents of the Eastern Bloc. I'll have another shotted sandwich with short shanks money penny. Our beloved Scotsman flipped later in life and played a tough Russian Navy commander in that cracker of a film, The Hunt for Red October. In my opinion, this austere outlook performed by the Western media is unjustified. How then do we go from cold concrete brutalism to some of the most enduring and amazing art and culture from one nation? I think the answer is the unending power of the human imagination. Our Raketa Big Zero, as I mentioned, is from the mid 80s, a time when the veil of reclusivity was being drawn aside a time when the political perestroika movement was gaining momentum, resurrecting Russia onto the world stage. The openness of Glasnost came to the media when then Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev was seen in Italy wearing a big zero. He is reported to have said at the time when asked about his watch, like my watch, our country is starting from zero. It's only a rumor that he actually said this, but I've never let a pesky thing like facts get in the way of a good story. As you can see, the dial on my watch is a bit weathered, but I really love the big, bold black markers on the cream, ivory, eggshell, bone, pale, stucco, blonde, white, neutral dial. The Big Zero was originally designed for the sight impaired, and it's easy to see why, no pun intended. The high contrasting hour markers make this one of the easiest watches to read at a glance. The eight triangles that make up the bulk of the face markings have rounded corners. 
When you first look at them, you assume they are simply sharp triangles. But no, they have radius them slightly. I've looked at reproduction dials where the triangles are sharp, and the whole watch face looks more harsh or angular without this simple design element. The numerals. Ah, the numerals. This is a focal point for me. When was the last time you looked at a watch or clock where the numbers started at zero? This is a fascinating design choice. This is outside the box thinking. The zero, three, six, and nine all have a rectangular shape to them with the zero, six, and nine especially having somewhat flattened sides. The six and nine are identical, just rotated 180 degrees. And you can see the ends of the numerals have small radiuses too. And this helps give off a softer quality. Overall, the dial feels like a refined gentleman telling you the time. It never shouts the time at you. These hands are a fascinating design choice too, in their truncated stubbiness. They often feel a bit too short, but this is part of the charm of the watch. Just because they feel a little short, does not make it in any way difficult to read. The hour and minute hands are slabs of black, though the pointing end of the hand is slightly rounded. Are you seeing a theme here? This really helps to soften the look of the watch. The central or pivot end of the hands are square. And imagining the square end on the pointing end just feels all wrong. The second hand is a fine pencil line of straight black until the counterbalance after the pinion, where it fans out ever so slightly. This subtle detail mirrors the hour triangle indexes slightly. The case is of a no-nonsense polished steel. It's a sturdy looking thing. It very much reminds me of some of the Grand Seikos, with a nod to the grammar of design. The barrel shaped case seems to flow like a liquid metal around the face. The sides are square, but towards the lugs is a very smooth compound curve that draws your eye up to the face. The strap is set into this curve, which also makes it nice to wear. It sits nicely on the wrist, it feels like it wraps around you. As you can see, my case is quite worn, especially underneath, where there is some pretty serious brassing. But this doesn't bother me in the slightest. The crown is a small, simple knurled affair, no fuss, as it sits in the slight recess in the side of the case. The crown does not interfere with that fluid design aesthetic. The crystal feels as bold as the face. It is a flat-topped plastic crystal, I am certain mine has been replaced many times in its life, but it still remains true to the original. It's like a hockey puck sitting atop the watch with tall square sides and a flat top. This does mean there are no distortions to the minute track. The crystal sits inside a polished steel bezel. The bezel comes straight out of the watch case, then is tapered into the crystal, which adds a feeling of height. As you can see, there are a thousand tiny design considerations that have been refined before going into what looks like the most simple watch ever. The movement in the Big Zero is the tried and tested Raketa 2609 calibre. This has been used in many, many, many watches. It is a hand-wound, time-only movement that still feels tight and strong. It is a joy to take that moment in the morning to look at the big zero while winding the crown for the day. It is a simple workhorse with 16 jewels, but it does have some very nice refinements like Inca block shock protection for the balance and a Breguet overcoil hairspring. Nice. This is a completely in-house movement, and I mean completely. Every single part of this watch was made in the Raketa factory. No outsourcing. How many wholly vertically integrated watch manufacturers can you think of? There aren't many, and even fewer that produce timepieces mere mortals like yours truly can afford. And what's more, the parts are all made on machines that are operated by people. 
actual people are putting their heart and soul into making these movements on machines that still require a skill and finesse to coax the best from them. No computer-driven affairs like one would expect from today. Getting at old Wiz Kalipas here, the Big Zero measures in at 39mm across, without the crown. With the crown, it's 41mm. The watch wears bigger than the 39mm would have you believe, on account of the maximum dial space. From lug tip to lug tip, it's 41mm. Now this surprised me. At no time did I feel like this watch was sort of round in its proportions. This is probably due to the way the lugs sweep out from the case. The lug width is 18mm, so your strap options are just about endless. And the thickness of the raquetta is just a hair over 10mm. So what's it like to wear? This is easily an everyday watch. It's not so expensive that you're thinking of nothing but the placement of your wrist in free space at all times. Yet it is interesting and catches the eye. And it is unique. You can be sure the person next to you won't have one on. And of course, it is so easy to read. Because of the big clean dial, it wears bigger than those dimensions would have you believe. But it sits happily on my wrist. It is equally at home being worn casual with jeans and a tee, but also with a business shirt. And that is a fine line to cross. I live a long way from St. Petersburg, Russia, just about as far as you can get, even in this increasingly shrinking world. Yet it still blows my tiny mind to think that this 40-year-old humble watch made its way to me without any fuss, shouting or angst. And what's better than a rocket Big Zero? Two rockets! This Big Zero is slightly less big, measuring in at 34mm across. Compared to today's standards, this is a small watch, but like its big brother, it doesn't feel small. It has the same hand wound 2609 movement and a very familiar design aesthetic. Although the case is a different shape, there is no mistaking that zero at the top of the dial. Around the softer looking domed crystal, the edge of the case is lightly fluted, which is fun. Overall, it is slightly smaller with a lug tip measurement of 39mm, but it still retains the 18mm strap. How handy. But I bought this watch for the dial. Those massive red 10 minute indicators, reminiscent of a radiation trefoil sign. But there's no radiation here. I love how the number 3 and 9 are cut in half by these red blocks and have contrasting colours. The hands, while much more pointed, are still the same proportions, with an hour hand that just feels slightly too small. I have this watch on a justified and ancient rubber tropic strap. I love the crosshatch texture of the strap and the bezel fluting. Mmm, fluting. If you are looking for provenance in the watchmaking fraternity, then Raketa is one of the greats. With an unbroken history that spans back further than just about any other brand and features a completely in-house movement. By those tokens alone, this watch is the bargain of the century. Many of their examples are very affordable. As such, Raketa watches make an excellent gateway drug into the world of watches. So what do you think about the Raketa Big Zero? A future classic or just tragic? Let me know in the comments below. Well, thanks for watching this chapter about the Raketa Big Zero. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And hit that bell for future chapters. See you next time. The Raketa Big Zero was originally produced in the uh, um, uh, beep, 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 beep. what again? Did I get that right? I'm hungry. <laughs>